there's been a decline, and some of it's a perceived decline, in the coastal economy and the number of visitors to the English and British coast since the 1950s for a whole host of reasons. So I was thinking, well, well what's going to attract people back to the sea? And I'd noticed that the beach huts really were the dominant architectural feature, but quite a lot of them are in a reasonably poor state of uh, disrepair. They've become slightly run down and partly neglected. So I thought, well, that's very interesting. Perhaps, um, perhaps the one unique thing that we could do on the Lincolnshire coast is to reinvent or reimagine the beach hut. My name's Peter Fender, I'm the Economic Infrastructure Manager at Lincolnshire County Council. 2007 and we were looking to do some work on the coast of Lincolnshire and as part of the project we always tried to make something special or something different or something that reflected the local communities. So when we got involved in Mablethorpe and Sutton-on-Sea and Chapel St Leonard, um, I thought here was an opportunity to do something slightly different and so we decided to commission an artist to work with us. Um, and that's how the project really started when we got Michael Trainer and Michael spent a weekend in a tent on the coast of Lincolnshire and he came up with the idea of Bathing Beauties. The weird thing about, the, uh, about a beach hut and, and those last few feet of land before you get to the sea is that it's the best view in the world. You know, it's the most exciting place. We'd all want to build a house there if you can. But you rarely get planning permission to build anything other than a beach hut or a nuclear power station. And for some reason, they wouldn't let me build a nuclear power station. So we launched the international design competition for artists, architects and designers. And that was much bigger than anticipated. The response was huge. 250 something entries from 15 different countries. So we did put it out looking for um, artists and architects, mainly because we wanted them to be actually built. It wasn't just a design competition um, where we'd come back and the best designers would win. We actually wanted these to be constructed. So sort we of had 21st century um, architecture, 21st century art, 21st century ideas, uh, and that's what sort of Bathing Beauties grew out of. So it was a phenomenal response. I mean, literally, I turned up expecting to spend an afternoon undoing models. I had to call the office, get as many people out as possible. There were hundreds, we had 250, all very, very professional models. People had spent a lot of time, a lot of care. When we were judging the competition, we had all the models laid out in rows. We had rows and rows of these beach huts, and we were walking along, judging them and looking at them and assessing them. It was just blindingly obvious that we were, what we were looking at was an exhibition because we'd, we'd accidentally set one up. Well, when people think about the British coast, they tend to think of a number of iconic images. So they think of fish and chips, giant ice cream, rock. Think of mermaids, think of sandcastles. And they're important images, but in the Bathing Beauties competition, we wanted things that didn't just reflect those traditional images, although we have got some that do. Uh, we also wanted kind of a new iconography, a new iconography for the coast and for the future. It, it was very difficult judging because there were 240 you know, different, um, different huts. We were very keen to, to commission a range of you know, traditional and less traditional um, ones that would be challenging to build, ones that would be interesting images on the front page of a newspaper if we got that far or in a magazine. 
it was, I suppose, at a time when ecology and sustainability was just beginning to take off, so there's an awful lot that involved some form of sustainable element, um, some element of recycling. Um, and a temp some of them had a temporary element to them, the fact you could bring things along, take them away with you. I think there are some recurring themes in the designs. Uh, there's quite a lot of sustainability issues covered because there's generally no power or water, so quite a few of them have their own uh, energy generating systems, big solar, wind powered and so on. A lot went into the brief about the natural environment and the weathering conditions, but also the light and the way the sun moves and what it feels like to be at the coast and what it means to people. Quite a lot of them use materials which weather naturally, so quite a lot of them have materials which are from sustainable or renewable or recyclable sources. Uh, which is important because you are actually on the beach, part of the environment. Quite a few swivel and turn so you can capture the sun. Quite a few have a second story because you are allowed to build a second story unusually on a beach hut and it gives you that better vistas and better views which actually in Lincolnshire more than anywhere else is really important because everything's so flat. So even a few extra feet gives you a brilliant view out to sea and across the land. Rotating the, um, the lens, you can either see, hold it that way, all the way down the coast to the south of Maplethorpe, which will be, you can see, come up and see me sometime, um, the wind farm off coast and obviously down to Skegness, but if you rotate it the other way, you can see down past the lifeboat station to um, Maplethorpe Promenade, or 180 degrees out to the sea. So the light is projected through the lens onto this table below um, and you can use these dishes to various, vary the focus of the light. Bathing Beauties as a title I think was the obvious choice, although obviously like all these simple titles it was like, you know, sweated over and thought about. Because uh, originally beach huts were bathing machines, they were little structures on wheels. Originally they're just for taking your clothes off uh, it, with some degree of modesty. So Queen Victoria had her own one on the Isle of Wight so that she could be wheeled down to the sea and step straight out into the sea. That was the idea of or bathing machines as they were called. They lost their wheels and become, became beach huts. And bathing beauties is a kind of well-known term for, I suppose, 1950s, I'm seeing kind of 1950s uh, model shows, actually lady models uh, parading around swimming pools at you know holiday camps and so on. So I think that's the origins of the bathing beauties. Uh, title but wrapped in it is the kind of little bit of history of the beach hut at the same time. And the, you know there's a real culture around the beach huts. People would return to the same beach huts knowing the same neighbours um, months for years um, and there's a sort of element of a cultural identity about the beach huts and it's not just you know, Lincolnshire that's got those but Lincolnshire does have an, an awful lot of those um, and it's very much what you see as you travel up and down the coast, not through the towns, but if you go up and down the promenades, that's where the interest is, that's where the beach huts are. We wanted the five that were chosen, the five or six that were chosen, were all intended to be different, um, but complementary if you like. So one that was a large mirror, um, another one that was more traditional, which was the timber hut, the house in, but, but had a slightly different quirk on that, the way the light was allowed to go through it. The idea was to commission ones that were different. Um, but then, you know, you've got half a dozen people judging as well. Everybody would have had a different way of looking at things. I was very keen to see ones that, were, that complemented each other, but showed a whole range of artists and architects' ideas, both in terms of materials um, and the way that they looked. It was actually important that I went through the process of designing one and building one myself, not because, you know, I necessarily had to do it, but really just to understand it so that 
I knew exactly what to expect, what the difficulties were, and so that we, I could assist in, with the other people who were going to win the competition uh, in being able to advise them when we come to build them physically, what the drawbacks were, what the access problems are, materials, things. So actually it was about me going through the process myself. And mine's quite, a, actually is a relatively straightforward idea. The hut itself is basically just based very simply on something I like to do at the seaside. You get to the end of the day, you're on your holidays, it's your first day. Best thing for me is a nice cold gin and tonic at the end of the day. So this beach hut, come up and see me, is just about sharing that idea of something lovely to do at the end of the day. And very simply, it's a stylized gin and tonic. So the vitreous tiles, the green tiles, fade up as you do with a drink into mid green and then pale green towards the top so you can imagine it's nice and wet and fresh and enticing. The mirrored sections are kind of abstract bubbles and when we look up we see the straws which obviously you can't have a gin tonic without a couple of straws in and then we've got a stylized lemon because who'd want a gin tonic without a giant lemon in it. So the whole thing is one cylindrical enticing actually walk in gin and tonic. I think what's so attractive to the public about the exhibition is it's a box of chocolates. You know, if you don't like one, you pick the next one, and there's a lot, you know, when you've got a hundred different variations. And the fact that they're all, the models, are responding to exactly the same question. So there's something deeply fascinating about a hundred and something answers to the same question. So it gives you an insight into people's imagination as well. That's just something that actually you learn a lot, whether you want to or not you're going to learn a lot about the creative process.